أمرنا بهذه المنح والحمد لله الذي له الجود وهو أكرم من فتح وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد الموحى إليه بقول ربه ألم نشرح اللهم اشرح لنا صدورنا ويسر لنا أمورنا يا كريم وبعد Dear Muslims, Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he guide us to this deen. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he guide us to be Muslimin. Alhamdulillah for this biggest bounty in the face of the earth in the whole entire universe, the bounty of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad al-Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Just a little bit of mixed information because the president here, here he suggested to fix whatever it's been mixed in the information. I started my journey in 1978. I'm very old, not 2007. 1978, the journey started with Hamza Yusuf, if you are familiar with. We are together, same age. Started in Al Ain City in 1978. I remain. Shafi school since that and I have been writing and teaching since that time. He left of course Shafi and went to Maliki school through Mauritania and came back he established the Zaytona Institute in California and I established the Razi Institute in 1992 in Boston, Massachusetts. And then I moved to Yemen in 2007 because a lot so writing it has to be done, a lot of research has to be done, especially in modern issues in the West, like family matters, some issues related to fiqh as well, and so many topics anyways. It's, uh, uh, then during that time I have been going back and forth to the States established many centers, especially in the Northeast area, and centers in Malaysia and Singapore, and my base over there in Sri Lanka, Colombo. Uh, may Allah guide us all to serve this deen as it should be. And may Allah purify our hearts to stick with the knowledge. This deen based on knowledge the right knowledge, the one it will connect you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first word revealed to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Iqra. And this word is not just revealed as the rest of the Quran, no. Jibreel alayhi salam, he came and he shaked him, he said, read, Iqra. I don't know how to read, three times. Then he said, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم All of you familiar with the meaning of this verses May Allah purify our hearts to receive the knowledge in a correct way not through W, W, a dot, and at the end you will end up a dot. And not through sky, and not through cut and base. This knowledge is protected through the chain. Al Ismadu min al Deen. If you don't have a chain, then don't talk. Bitter to not talk. Don't go read a couple of books. And now, are, and now you are Shaykh al-Hadith because you read al-Bukhari and Muslim. Reading the books of Hadith different than studying the books of Hadith. And this is Shaykh al-Islam because he read a couple of chapters in Tafsir and a couple of books in Fiqh. And he became Shaykh al-Islam and the Mufti. I love this title, it's Mufti. One time when I'm in Connecticut visiting, one kid came, about 22 years old, they introduced him to me that he is a Mufti. I said, son, I'm 35 years, I have been studying and teaching and writing in every area. In the Sharia sciences, I don't call myself Mufti. Not out of being uh, humble. No, that's reality. Do you, how, do, you, do you know how many Muftis in the face of the earth? Good luck if you find 50 in the whole Muslim way. That you will be lucky if you find the 50. 
In my opinion, probably 10 or 15. Not everybody call himself a mufti is a mufti. If I want to tell you what do you have or what you should have from qualification, you flip out to be a mufti. But in our time, alhamdulillah, everybody is a mufti, everybody is a alim, everybody is sheikh al-hadith, everybody is a qari, everybody is, I don't know, it's just so many, to the point is, I can't really tell anymore. But it's okay, because we are far away from ikra. Ikra, bismi rabbika ladhi khala. If you are not connected to that prophet, the one who revealed this chapter, don't, don't talk. Bukhari, he used to travel for one month on a camel or in a horse to get one hadith. One month. And now you want to download all books of hadith in a second and now you are Shaykh al-Hadith. Incredible. Amazing. Our knowledge it went down the drain. And I'm telling you. And I'm serious with every single word I have been saying tonight. That's the reason Allah, alhamdulillah, guide me to everywhere I go, I just open institutes. I don't care about anything else. Because there is no knowledge. So ever there is no knowledge. Nothing. Big deal if you go to some university and you get a bachelor degree or a master degree or a PhD and you end up doing stuff on CD and DVD. And believe me, anything ended with D, you put question mark over it. Because according to this, Imam Suyuti, if he, is, if he comes appear in our time, the one who wrote 981 books, books, not booklets. One of them, Al-Jami' al hadith al-Rasul, 35 volumes, each one of it is 1,000 pages. 35,000 pages, that's one book from the 981. What degree are you going to give him? Can you tell me? If Abu Hanifa appeared, what degree are you going to give him? If Imam Bukhari degree appeared, what degree are you going to give him? It's a joke. All the education in our time, it's a joke. It is a joke. If you don't put intention and strong intention and you have sincerity for going and seeking this deen as our teacher they did, we study it from them, then they study it from the third generation, from the other generation, from the other generation, all the way to the Prophet That's the reason you see the light on the teaching. Through that wire from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not from them, from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to have that chain. That chain is the nur, comes from it. You could tell that the person is connected or not from the way he received his education. The chain with the knowledge is that like that light and the switch if there is no wire in between keep clicking you will see any light no put the wire and click you will see the light and that's the chain to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you don't have that chain then don't talk better don't talk because if you talk you will destroy more than if you don't talk imam ghazali hujjatul islam in his book ihya al din May Allah give him all the rewards of what he did and all the mercy. Hujjatul Islam, Imam al-Ghazali. He said, people, there are three types. One, he doesn't know that he knows. The one he knows and he doesn't know that he knows. We'll tell him, wake up and go teach. You need some confidence. You have a lot of knowledge and you are well connected. And the second one, the one who doesn't know, and he knows that he doesn't know. He said, this is a person, he is seeking knowledge, go teach him. And the third one, the one he doesn't know, and he doesn't know that he doesn't know. He thinks himself Shaykh al-Islam, and in reality, he doesn't know that he doesn't know. He said, make dua for him, don't do, go in argument with this guy, because you'll never get anywhere. 
May Allah guide us to seek this deen as it should be. This deen, everywhere I go, I start usually my lecture about knowledge. Because the knowledge is the key for everything. The knowledge is the key for the successful in the family. The knowledge is the key for successful between the wife and the husband. The knowledge is the successful between the children and the parents. The knowledge is the successful between the community and between the relatives. Knowledge, but what types of knowledge? Is not just the knowledge is being connected, that's we call it knowledge from out in. Back to Al Imam Al Ghazali, that's what he said. Knowledge is two types out in and in out. While you are taking the knowledge from out in through the chain from those expert qualified teachers who received the knowledge through traditional way in a classical way to all those classical books, you will be doing the knowledge from in out. How is the knowledge from in out? You have to start working on purifying your heart before you take that knowledge from out in. Because that heart is infected with so many viruses. One virus called jealousy. The other virus called hatred. The other virus called anger. And the tongue forget it. Some of the viruses called backbiting. All of these different types of viruses it comes and infecting all the body. And now, a person after that, he's supposed to be receiving knowledge and that knowledge will be infected. That knowledge, it will be infected. Why? Because he's receiving it in an purified heart. First, while you're taking the knowledge from out in, you will be purifying your heart from in out. How, we, how the scholars, they taught in this traditional, classical way. They used to wake up the students in the middle of the night. Stand and go do your qiyam al your tahajjud. Then you sit and you do your awrah. And minimum of this awrah, at least one juzu of the Quran. That's minimum. Or don't call yourself a student of knowledge. Never mind a scholar or Shaykh al-Islam or Shaykh al-Hadith. Like all these definitions we hear in our time. Do you have those types of awrad every day? Do you do your qiyam al-layl every day? One time Abu Hanifa is walking and there is people talking about him. They don't know that he's behind them. One he's telling the others Abu Hanifa he pray one third of the night. Right away his tears went down and he flipped back. He said from tonight I'm going to start doing one third of the night. He is used to do one quarter of the night. Qiyam al-layl. How the people, they say one third and he does one quart, he start doing one, one third of the night. Qiyam al Qiyam al Do we do that? That's the question. We have to do that. We have to do the dhikr. That's how they used to do with the students. Then they do the fajr. Then they continue doing dhikr. Then a circle or a halakha about spiritualism to purify the heart more. Then after that, you start giving the knowledge from out in, which is chained through isnad to the Prophet Now you cleaning from inside, and you purifying the inside, and you downloading knowledge from out in. While you purifying from in out, you downloading from out in. And now this knowledge, it will have effect on you. This knowledge, it will have a taste in your mouth. And that's the time you will taste the religion. There is difference between learning the religion and tasting the religion. And the taste, you will never be able to explain. Taste, it's unexplainable at all. How are you going to explain the taste? If I tell you what's the taste of the sugar, what are you going to say? Sweet. What's the taste of the honey? <laughs> Could you define what's the difference between them? <laughs> Keep talking from now until another one year. The only way is to taste it. 
That's the only way. And that's what I meant with seeking the knowledge this way. This way you will be learning and testing at the same time. Not cut and paste from a website or checking Sheikh Google to give you the answer. But obvious, that's the education in our time. That's how it is. They go, they study one book, 